What's up everyone, Game Dad here, coming at you guys with a brand new collection video. This time we are taking a look at everything that is currently in my Commodore 64 collection. Now this is another one of those smaller collections that I only got a few games for, but I do have games for the C64 as well as the actual five and a quarter floppy drive, the 1541. So come with me as we take a look at the games that are on the list today. All right, first up, we have Attack of the Mutant Camels, released by Lamasoft in 1983. And this is an interesting game. It was kind of hard to figure out the controls. I don't know if maybe I just didn't have the right controller. I was using a regular joystick. But whenever I would fire, it would let me fire at stuff, but I couldn't really move around. So eventually, one of these laser ships going around the sides would actually take me out. And obviously, that's no fun if you always lose. Up next, we have Buck Rogers, Planet of Zoom, released by Sega in 1982. And this one's pretty fun. It kind of reminded me of Space Harrier, but instead of a dude floating around in the sky, it was a starship. Now, I'm not really sure, based off this initial level, what it has to do with Buck Rogers, other than, you know, a spaceship. But, I mean, it was still pretty fun. It had some pretty good tunes going with it, uh, some fun sound effects, and it did get kind of challenging as the gameplay went on. Up next is an absolute classic, that is Centipede, released by Atari in 1983, and in this game, you're going around shooting the centipede, taking out all the trees in the forest, and just trying to rack up that high score. Super awesome game. I definitely prefer the arcade version, just because it's a little more colorful, the sound is a little bit better, but you know what? Having this at home on an actual computer is actually pretty cool. Now here we have Dig Dug, released by Namco in 1983, and this one, along with a few others in this video, I could not get the gameplay to actually work. The little tabs inside of the cartridge that actually hold the card in place would not completely insert and weren't holding the game properly. So as much as I tried, I could not get the gameplay footage of this to come up on my Commodore, but if you've ever played Dig Dug, I mean, it's the same thing. And here we have Donkey Kong, released by Nintendo in 1983, and much like Dig Dug, it's having the same issue where I can't get it plugged in all the way because that little card that you see at the bottom with the pins actually recesses into the cartridge and won't allow me to plug it into the back of my Commodore 64. So, unfortunate that I can't play it on the console, but I really didn't want to have to break open the cartridge for this. Up next, we have the Epix Fast Load Cartridge for the C64. This was released by Epix in 1984, and it's not an actual game. Instead, what it does is you plug this into your Commodore 64, and it allows 1541, the five and a quarter inch uh, cassette games, to actually load faster. So it's a pretty slow load time without it, and by today's standards, it's a colossal amount of time, but this did make it much better back in the day. Here's another one that's not really a game, and that is the HES Rider 64, released in 1982 by Human Engineered Software, hence the HES. And this is essentially a code writing software, much like BASIC, that comes on a C64 or C128 already. And this is just a slightly different way of being able to put in commands and stuff on your Commodore console. Up next, we have Jumpman Jr., released by Epix in 1983, and this game is brutal. Man, it's very, very fast-paced, and essentially everything in this game kills you. You die so much, and I got so sick of hearing that, like, common death sound that they have in it. It was very obnoxious, but the game is fun once you get the hang of it, but, oh man, it is brutal. Last up for the cartridges is The Duzzles, released by Camelot Incorporated in 1984, and this is a video puzzle game. So they show you the picture in the beginning, then your little guy goes and grabs the pieces that are off to the side, and then you have to lay them out, and it's a video puzzle game. I mean, it's kind of in the name. It's pretty fun, I guess, if you like puzzles. Here's one of my cassette games. That is The Last V8, released by Mastertronic in 1985. And this is a five and a quarter cassette for the 1541 drive. So for you people that are younger, that is a floppy drive. For you people that are a lot younger, a floppy drive is the save icon on your computer. That's how us older people used to actually, you know, play games and stuff. And here we have Zork 2, The Wizard of Frobos, released by Infocom in 1981. And this is a text-based adventure game. And what's kind of cool, a little Easter egg for all you younger generation, 
play Call of Duty Black Ops in the menu, pull the triggers on your controller to release you from the chair, go around to the computer, and you can actually play the original Zork on that computer in Black Ops. So there you have it everyone, that is everything that is currently in my Commodore 64 collection. As you can see, it's a pretty small collection, so if you have any suggestions for some awesome games that I can add to it, let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, please be sure to also hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as that little notification bell so you can alert every time I get a new video coming out. Now, as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later.